Hi all, Tech Teardown here. Today we're going to do something a little bit different and I'm going to do a preview of some software that has not come out yet, but I'm pretty excited about. So today we're going to be talking about the browser company and their new browser called Arc. So the browser company is trying to take on what looks like the way that we browse the internet. You're probably browsing this video on something like Chrome or Firefox. Chrome being one of the most popular. And so the main thesis here from the browser company seems to be that what if browsers were less complicated, if they helped us stay focused, organized, and control? And their ambitious mission here is that they're building a better way to use the internet. Now, there is a pretty interesting article that I'll link in the notes here. And I'm talking to some of the designers about building this new browser and how they want you to build your internet home. So let's hear it first from the browser company with their own video on what they show. So pretty snazzy video. There were a lot of things in there that I really liked about how they interact on this web browser. You can think of, you know, saving things, sort of that curation. If you use extensions, you might be familiar with things like Pocket or Pinterest. You're sort of collecting things. So I'll go into that a little bit. But those are some of the features that I'm most excited about. I think there's really three things, though, that stand out for me about this browser. So the first being that it seems very custom the ability to create, and the third, their idea around feelings. So we'll go into each of those. So there's not a ton of information out there on the browser. You need to be on a wait list to actually get access to it. And I am anxiously awaiting an invite to that. So pretty neat. We can already feel that the unboxing video makes it feel like a piece of hardware, right? You don't think of unboxing a piece of software, but really sort of this customized, personalized type view is pretty neat in the way that you're opening up the browser. You can see that from the screenshots that we can see the different way of looking at folders over here on the left side. Usually you're used to that big bar across the top where you might have your bookmarks. This makes it really accessible though on this left side where it looks like you can create these collections of different items that you use all the time. So you can see there's these types of tabs that I'm assuming you're able to customize to places that you go. You can save these different groups of tabs down here, put things in folders for later. Now, I think there's some intelligence here on saving tabs for you so that you don't have to remember to bookmark everything. But you can already see this is a pretty neat view where you can save things and it looks like you can search through photos that maybe you've clipped from the internet over time, which would be a huge feature which you can do today in Pinterest, but it's not the smoothest when you're having to categorize different things. And getting back to the customization or the personalization, here, watch this video on how you can actually personalize the color on that initial setup of the browser. You can see here that you can drag the icon around, instantly showing you, you know, what color changes there are. I think this is just a really nice personalization feature. You can instantly see the changes. I always get frustrated when you're trying to pick a color for something. Maybe it's the Chrome browser and you don't know what it's going to look like. Here, you get that instant preview. And I think that just shows how much they care about things like customization and what that looks like. So great. It's really custom, but what other features make this different? Now, I think one of the cool things is about the ability to create. Josh Miller here, he's the CEO of the company. He put this tweet out about you know, the earliest web browser is allowing you to write on the internet. And so they have a tool within Arc that's called the easel tool. And so he gave this document that's a little demo of what that looks like. So it seems to be a type of board that you can share. So you can see here, they did this for their lunch club. They did some nice embeds. I love these dynamic embeds where you can just pull a link from, let's say, Google, and it looks nice and crisp. You can see there's some photos here that are overlapping and with some links 
to the uh, the place that they were going to launch. You can see the drawing ability to add photos, text, being able to place images on this sort of canvas, I'm assuming. This is just a really fun way to share things. I can imagine, you know, sharing maybe an itinerary with friends of where we're going to go. Maybe somebody's visiting a city and I want to put together a guide for them on where they should visit. Or maybe I'm even doing something for work, right? And I would just, you know, we all do too much Google Slides and PowerPoints. Maybe you want to have a nice, fun way of sharing things for work. But I really see a lot of opportunity in how we do things on the internet just through personalized things and recommendations. So I think this is a really cool way to share links. And this is all in a link that looks like it's hosted on arc.net. So you can imagine these are really easy to share from this easel and you can create them right in your browser. So the creation and sharing piece was number two. I think it's really exciting. I can't wait to see what else they come up with. Now, the third one, though, is talking about feelings. And I think this is where it gets really interesting because they've put on their blog that in the end, they're not optimizing for numbers. They want to optimize for feelings. And that really comes out with the browser. So it really seems artistic. They have a lot of care for what they're doing. And I'm really just inspired that, you know, this isn't about you know, just getting the most users, but actually thinking about people who create and how we optimize for how things feel. And that comes out in really subtle ways. You can see that they've done things like make these little um, design details playful, right? So these little um, notes coming off the Spotify icon, I think is just really different than what we're used to on the internet. We're not used to these types of little animations. You can also see here in another example, just having these light little actions when you hover over certain buttons, making those mobile, making them dynamic and move around. Little things like that, that, you know, I think you're just going to make a big difference in how it actually feels when you use this tool. So that's it for this video. I'm super excited to check out Arc Browser, anxiously awaiting the ability to test it out. Once it does come out, I'll do a new video if they allow it on being able to show you what it looks like. I'd love to test it out and see if it works with the workflows that I have. But super excited to see how this goes. and. If you'd like access to any of the videos, please subscribe. Uh, I'll be putting out a video each week. And thanks for watching this preview of Arc Browser. Will this be better than Chrome? I'm not sure, but we'll see.